Good day. In this lecture video, we will be talking about how to formally define a set, its elements and subsets. So basically, we often define sets using a set builder notation. So recall that the set A, so defined in our previous example, the set A has an element circle, triangle, square, and rectangle as elements. If we write set A using a set builder notation, it will look like this, where the objects enclosed in curly braces are the elements of the sets, equated to the set name, which is A. Another example is the set B, which will look like this. So these are the elements of the set B. So if we write it in the set builder notation, we have all the elements enclosed in an open closed curly braces equated with the name of our set, which is B. Okay, so basically a set could be finite or infinite. So a finite set means that its element is countable, while an infinite set means that the number of its element is infinite. In the previous examples, we have set A and set B. It shows finite set, each of which has countable elements, wherein each element could be written in a set builder notation without a problem. Now what if we have a large finite set with maybe more than 20 elements, 30, 50, maybe a thousand elements. Though the number of elements is still countable, defining such sets by explicitly writing each of its element in a set builder notation could be a tedious and time-consuming task. So for example, we have a set named set D that contains all the music I have on my phone. If you write the set in a set builder notation, we have we have this. So writing all the songs names could be time consuming. So we have all of that songs. For example, I have around 100 songs in my phone. And if I write them on a set, all of them, and if I continue doing so, I think we will finish defining the set D maybe tomorrow or the next day, which is actually not very ideal. So now you might be wondering how. How could we define large, finite, and infinite sets there? Well, there is another way in writing a set builder notation, which caters such sets. So example, the set D, we just, so example, the set D, we just defined could be written this way, using another form of set builder notation. So this is our sets, this is our set D, and this is another form of the set builder notation which is read as the set D that contains the element X, such that X is all the songs I have on my phone. So uh, this is read as such that. So in this form, thus using this form, uh, we can define a very large finite set and even infinite set. Since, as you can see, if we go back to the previous slides, you can see uh, this defines all of the songs that I have in my phone since uh, it is now represented as a variable, right? So, if we write, use this form of a set builder notation defining an infinite set, for example, we have the set Z that contains all the integers, we can easily write it this way. So Z is a set which contains all of the X such that this X is an integer. So again, all, all the integers in the number line are infinite. We have infinite number of integers. And writing them explicitly one by one inside the curly braces could be, would take forever, literally. 
but with this form it is now very easy to define it since uh, all the elements are now represented as a variable x so uh, another note however in using this kind of uh, form of set builder notation is that in defining set this way it is important to remember that all the member the set has should always have something in common so that you could describe them easily as a value of x in our examples a set these elements are all music found in my phone and set these elements are all integers meaning all of the elements inside the set have similarities so in using this again this set builder notation form it is required that all of the elements in that set should have something in common so that you could easily describe what of the variable represent what the variable is representing rather 